Okay. Oh, hang on. I'm going to. Oh, there we go. Hi. How are you? <laughs> hey, I'm well. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining us. It's so nice to see your face. Um, for everyone joining us, hello. Thank you for being with us on World Mental Health Day. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to introduce to you the wonderful uh, Dr. Britt Ray from Stanford University. She's also the creator of Gen Dread, and I'm a very big fan of your work. So thank you again for being here today. Oh, yeah. Likewise, thanks, Catherine. <laughs> um, the theme of this year's World Mental Health Day is nature. So I thought it would be an amazing opportunity to sit down with an expert and talk about something that I think a lot of people have been maybe thinking and feeling, but don't really know too much about, and that's climate anxiety. Um, so I guess my first question for you, Britt, is what is climate anxiety? Who does it affect? Sure. So climate anxiety refers to many wide ranging forms of distress that lots of people around the world right now are feeling because of the climate crisis. So of course it can manifest as anxiety as the title would make you think of, but also sadness, helplessness, hopelessness, fear, um, grief. There's lots of different co-occurring difficult emotions that people are reporting experience with because of the climate crisis. And importantly, not just due to the fact that we are witnessing a world that is increasingly in a dangerous state due to warming temperatures, but we're also losing ecosystems and other species, non-human species. And importantly, we're seeing leaders not taking adequate action. So there's an important element there about feeling betrayed or feeling let down by those who are put in positions to protect humanity and are failing to do so by not taking aggressive climate action that aligns with the science. So climate anxiety, we know from uh, a variety of studies that have come out, affects lots of different people around the world in low and middle income countries, as well as high income countries. It doesn't just reserve itself for a certain subsect of humanity. Um, it particularly is dominant in younger generations. You know, people who are now growing up have understood for years that the climate crisis is something that they're going to have to contend with over their entire lives, yet they have the least responsibility for creating the emissions that are producing that very uncertain future that they'll have to cope with while those in power who have benefited from high emissions lifestyles and are still um, the ones responsible for taking action but generally failing to do so won't be around to deal with the consequences. So we see it as um, young people being at the, the kind of head of uh, who we think of as the climate anxious but it really can uh, pervasively affect anyone from any generation. There are tons of older people too who feel this. Mm. And I mean, we talked a little bit yesterday about um, just, I guess, that feeling that you were that you were saying that kind of hopeless feeling. Or you know, there's been so much that's happened in the world the last two years, but um, especially with the climate. And you said that this also wasn't a. It's not climate anxiety. Isn't a mental. Uh, illness per se it's not anxiety or depression but can that can climate anxiety trigger or worsen pre-existing or or other mental illnesses such as depression and anxiety 